Hey guys, Derek from One River Tea. Uh, we just got done with our first day here in Fooding, outside of Fooding in Dien Tho. We started out going to the wholesaler's market and we've got uh, a little bit of tea here. We're gonna do is we're gonna work through it. We have two different grades of show made that we're gonna taste test. But first let me tell you everything that we acquired in this very, very brief day. First off, we have some 2020 show made. And this is from the farm that we actually went to. This is the tea on the left. The farm is very beautiful, and we have a lot of uh, insight on how that farm operates. The second one we have is this shone, which is done by a man surnamed Miao, who has his tea, uh, tea farm down by the old tea docks in Seattle, where they used to shift tea out all the way to the sea. Let's see, what else we got in the market? We got some aged shone, this is 2014, or 2016, it's four years old. Uh, we got this from an older older gentleman without any WeChat or any means to contact him other than his telephone number, so we'll have to follow up with him next year when we go back. But it smells really good. We haven't tasted it yet, so we'll try it later. Uh, let's see. This is some 2020 finally done. This is also from this farm. We won't be visiting this farm later. So we have some good guanxi with them, some good uh, connections and relationship with them. This Baimu Dan looks very, very good. Very, very fragrant. So, uh, the farm that it's coming from looks great. About 300 mu up in a 2,000 feet elevation land. They also make this red tea. This is very exciting. It's a Bai Mudan varietal made into a red tea. We came across maybe three or four different types of white tea turned red and they didn't taste very good, but this one smells excellent, so we're excited to try that later as well. Finally, we have this bag, which we accidentally grabbed. Uh, they accidentally gave it to us. This is the Bai Lu, is that correct? Yeah, so this is the Bai Lu, which is a different type of varietal. It's not the Da Bai Hao. And so we'll, we can do another taste testing with that to compare how the Bai Lu compares with the Da Bai Hao. I believe that is it. This is more of the higher grade of Chaumet. <clears throat> and yeah, so let's taste these two different varieties. On the right, we have something that's a little more green. Uh, very good processing, but we didn't go to the farms. Here we have something a little more brown. This is very interesting. A lot of people, the brown color for Chaumet is very popular right now with the tea farmers and the tea sellers because it looks older. And the farmers, the producers themselves, told us that they choose to make it a little brown. So if they, if the far, if the seller wants it brown, they can make it brown. If they want it green, they can make it green. But the browns apparently sells easier because it looks older. But we're gonna taste these side by side. We have our teapots, and we're gonna give them a little infusions. What we're gonna do is we're gonna warm up the vessels, warm up the leaves, uh, and then let it steep for about three minutes, and compare them back to back. So. See so here are the two different teas. As you can see, this one is a little darker, a little more brown. This one's a little more green. As we mentioned, they can make it look greener or darker depending on the consumer's need. So this is from our friends up on the mountain that we went to today. This is from a farm we have not visited, but the production quality looks a little more clean. So those are the teas we're gonna taste. Hey, hello there, I'm Alex from ORT. First, we're going to take a whiff of these dry leaves and then move on to the wet leaves, compare the aromas and then move on finally to the actual brewing. Yes. So first what we have, which one do you want to start with? I think let's start first with the tea for Mr. Miao down by the docks. Okay, so this is the more green shome, so we'll give it a smell. Hmm. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of spice, some of that freshness, I like the fresh cut grass, some of the stuff I usually get from the Bai Mudan. Very grassy, very spring. Mm. Uh, so let's not smell this darker one. Yeah, wow, very interesting. I'm getting some something almost almost like a roasted oolong smell. Something very much more woodsy. Earth moss, maybe? Yeah, Hot totally, moss. totally different. <laughs> that's 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 huh. quite a bit difference. because uh, we heard, you know, whether it's darker, whether it's lighter, that's just a matter of, you know, how it looks and a preference, but already we're smelling a huge difference in here. The green one is like grass. It's very, very fresh. The dark one is like wood, like moss. So let's pour these up. Let's uh, rinse these leaves and smell the wet leaves. All right, now it's time to give these leaves another whip. 
there. Yeah. So now that they're even more warmed up, a little saturated with water, we're gonna smell the wet leaves. So this is the green first. Mm, I'm getting still just that freshness. Like a, it is almost a little spicy. I think I mentioned this before with white tea. It's like a green bell pepper, like a fresh cut green bell pepper. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> <laughs> cool, so let's smell that one you first. Yeah. Oh, that's different. I definitely you can smell more astringency this time around. The moss is all gone. Right. Let's see. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's less mossy, a little more like roast. But it's interesting because these teas were not roasted. And we'll see what, what comes out in the pores because we're really gonna push these guys, maybe give them three to five minutes at boiling and then pour them out and compare. So. Let's see then. All right, it's been five minutes. Now it's time to pour these out and give them a taste test. All right, let's start with the green. So again, this is the greener uh, Chaumet, harvested just recently. This is 2020 in autumn time, October, almost October. Tomorrow's October. Uh, but this looks a little more green. This is from our guy down by the docks, acquired at the wholesaling tea market. Let's give it a taste. Mm. It's very thick on the mouth. A little bitter, but that's expected after having steeped it for five minutes right off the bat. When you steep it that long, the idea is any imperfections in the tea will become more accentuated and easier to find. Mm. I'm getting still that grassiness though. So a little more thick grass, not like that fresh green bell pepper. Mm -hmm. but... mm. Yeah, a very thick coating on the mouth, a little bit of, or quite a bit of way down already. <clears throat> you can feel it on the back of your tongue into your throat. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's try this uh, darker tea. This is from our friends up on the mountain. Again, this is the, again, same, same varietal, same processing method. This one is just a little darker. We'll give it a taste. Mm, so we get that wood right off the aroma. No moss though. Mm. Equally as thick on the mouth, maybe a little less thick, actually. Mm, nice woodsy flavor of the mouth. Actually, this I didn't get as much bitterness from this one. Not initially, no. As I did from this one. Huh. Very, very, very nice. It's almost like a, a hoji cha, like a roasted Japanese green tea. And it mix between that and the kuji cha, which, as you can see, there's a lot of stems in these leaves. A huge amount of stems. Hmm. I'm starting to get a little bit of astringency on the sides of the tongue, on the back of the mouth. Hmm. So before we went out and bought this tea, the theory that the producer had given us was, when you see these darker leaves, typically what you're going to expect is more astringency and more bitterness. It wasn't initially what we felt here, but certainly with the end of the at last set, you can kind of get a feel for perhaps what that producer is talking about. Yeah. Uh, the idea there being that as these leaves are being um, essentially dry outside under the sun, if they aren't dried evenly, some of the water gets trapped inside, and with that water, certain bitter cloudy chemicals as well. But we have yet to see that true uh, processing method. Mm -hmm. Hopefully in the springtime we'll come back, check it out. Maybe next fall we'll get here earlier so we can see them actually making these teas. Because this producer up on the mountain said they can both make it both green and brown. So we'd like to see the, the differences there and how it affects the flavor. Already the green, very bitter right off the bat. The brown, less bitter, more astringent towards the end. The brown is usually more used for aging, but the green is usually more drink, drunk fresh. So, uh, these are two different types of uh, shomei, made the same year, made around the same time, just processed in a slightly different way, uh, and there are some differences, so it was very interesting to see that. All right, cool. Cool. See you guys later.